Hi there again, it's Jason, and we're back with another Schleg video for the Residential Locksmith Starter Series. And we're going right back to the F Series. You're like, Jason, what in the F? You already talked about F Series. I didn't cover the newest version of the F Series, the compressible cylinder that came about in like, what was it, 2005 ish? So it's, I say new. There's also a new new. This is the new new, which is the style that is currently available for purchase. This is the style that you're gonna get when you go buy an F-Series knob. And as we talked about in the old style F-Series knob that did not have the compressible cylinder, the newest style as of about five-ish years ago, when you have it in the locked position and you go out the door, when you turn the knob to go out the door, it automatically unlocks it. They added that in about five-ish years ago and, uh, and, really, and really hurt the locksmith who goes out to unlock doors often, but that's neither here nor there. Literally, they're the same exact lock for one minor difference, and that is in the cylinder. Now, back when I remember back in the day when they introduced this, and they sent out a survey to locksmiths, and they were like, what do you think about this? And every locksmith out there was like, well, we think it's utter crap. However, it has stood the test of time. Some of you may still think it's crap, but it's stood the test of time. I see and I rekey these cylinders all the time. There is a little specific way you have to, you have to be a little bit more careful when you're rekeying these cylinders, but the style before this, when they first changed to the compressible style cylinders, uh, it was the same old F platform where if you turn the door and you walk out and it closes behind you, it's still locked if it was in the lock system before. When they changed this part about five years ago, uh, it made it, you know, we, we see very, very few lockouts on doorknobs because of that. However, the biggest difference is, is how they formed the knob. Now, if you go back on some of the F series, they said they do this to provide uniformity now, I remember this, they to provide uniformity in the knobs. Now, I don't know what the heck that meant because they, they like, they wanted, like, for a while, the F series had a smaller inner knob that was the weirdest thing. Like, I had a bigger, like, on the, on the Plymouth style, which is just a smooth, you know, smushed ball front, is what I call that. Like, the, the, for a while, the inner knob was like smaller for some weird reason. Uh, and then they started coming bigger. And then they went through this weirdo phase of secure key, which we're gonna talk about in a whole separate video. Then they came out with the compressible style cylinder. And I guess it's because it makes the knobs look, you know, instead of having this extra, I guess, instead of having this extra ring, they came out with this weirdo compressible cylinder. Uh, and we were all like, what in the crap is that? But you can see I've got one already picked here. I will say I mentioned Lishy with F-Series being a great, uh, a great way, you know, a good, a good version, a good way to, to pick these and turn them and do whatever you needed to get them off the door. Because as the doorknob, this was one of those that locksmiths had to learn to pick before there were ever the Lishies. On the original F-Series with standard pins, these work great. On the A series that we're gonna be doing a video, they work great. Uh, D series are a little bit harder because there's such spring tension on it. But when they went to the compressible cylinders and then these came out well after that, through my practicing and through my actually using it on site to get past these or to take them apart to re them, this guy is a little difficult. It, there's a lot of learning curve between the regular style cylinder and this. And you'll see why once we take it apart it is because how the pins, the top pins, I think this is mainly the reason, I think it's because of how the top pins work on it. So, you know, if we were gonna take this off the door, this, this is a no brainer, really. It's, uh, if, if you don't have to take it off the door if you're just rekeying it, if you have keys, you simply turn the key like the other F series and poke the button. The difference in them was the original F series had a hole on one side and the other, the retainer was only on one side. These, now that they're one piece knobs, they've only got the retainer on one side. So when you get to a door, you can automatically pretty much tell that it's a, a smart key, or not a smart key, a 
F-series, new F-series, by the fact that there's only one poke hole. So let's go ahead and poke hole it. It's right there. Let's see if you can see. Can you see that? Can you see that okay? Right there, let me see. Let's turn this a little bit. So that, see that right there? We've got it turned. Again, it doesn't matter which side, which way. If it can be, it's actually locked right now. And you can poke the retainer and pull it off. All right. Now, this guy, when I lishied this to get it open, it took a while. And I did not feel any of uh, one and two pins. And that's because we have a cylinder malfunction. So, let's go ahead and take this guy out. While I'm at the door, I go ahead and take this out because you don't want it falling sideways or whatever. And I'm going to go ahead, and if you look right, right in the back right there, you can push it through. And sometimes that will push down and let you just push it right out. Now, we have a problem because we've got some, some springs and stuff. The cylinder has exploded. So that is not going to let us get it out. The cylinder has to compress all the way. So in this case, when you take it off and you hear that, you're most likely going to have to reach in there uh, with something and and push it down and I do that with the pick or or my quick set pokey tool found one <laughs> Okay, be careful there quick set pokey tool. You should always have it on your key ring uh, It makes a great way to reach in there And see we push it down reach in there and press the cap down just kind of like that I can't see what I'm doing right now. So I'm just doing this by feel All right pushing it down pushing it pushing it down once it gets to that point, it should push all the way out, and it's not because the cylinder's messed up. So in the effort of rebuilding this guy to show you how to deal with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pick, and I'm just going to pop that cap the rest of the way off because I know it's, uh, it's basically foobar. Uh, so I'm going to try my best to get that off. Maybe, maybe. There it goes. Okay, so I just popped it off. We're gonna run, uh-oh, uh-oh. Let's turn it upside down and dump out, dump out the rest of the springs because it's not gonna come out easily when those springs are up in the way. Ah, there we go. There we go. So there is a bare, a bare cylinder. I'm gonna go ahead and take one apart on the bench to show you how it should come out. So let's move over there. Also, if you need to get it off the door, literally, oh, hey. <laughs> literally you just you just grab your phillips screwdriver and you come in at an angle because the screws are at 12 o'clock six o'clock and and you just un unscrew it i mean it's two visible screws it should be pretty easy to figure that out take it off the door when you put it back on the door there is two two kind of holes in the latch depending on which back set you're using it all goes together fairly easily, of course, because it's just a hey, magnetic tip on the new Cat Dallas Cowboys screwdriver. <laughs> All right, let me hold this over here so it doesn't go bouncing to the ground. So there we go. Let's see, standard latch. They have not changed anything. Everything's pretty much the same as the old F-Series besides the fact that you have these compressible cylinders now. Uh, they are also in levers, in case you're wondering. When you're putting this back on, typically, if, if this is horizontal, this bar that, that you're unlocking your lock, then, then the button needs to be horizontal. But just like in the other F-Series, you just kind of have to kind of have to wiggle it on, just make sure that the uh, this part goes over the screw post correctly but if it doesn't go on at 12 o'clock six o'clock then it's probably not on correctly i'm going to go ahead and tighten these back down let's move over to the bench okay as you can see this one is picked as well to the unlocked position on that one push in the retainer pop it off that stays on the door grab your quick set pokey tool reach in there and you see how sometimes like when you press it like it doesn't want to doesn't want to come past that so then i just reach in with this guy and press that cap down once you press it down you should be able to get it 
pass there. So there's what a regular cylinder without it being blown off looks like. Little teeth grab into these little slots and it uses special springs and pins and a cap. So the these are, these are parts that you have to order separately. These don't come with this. These are true Schlage parts. And the one thing that you're going to need, you're going to need a bag of the top pins, 506-451, a bag of the T-pin top springs, which is 506-453, and uh, the caps themselves. Now, I will say I've been doing this since these things came out, 506-452, which is the caps, which we are going to need one of those, along with five, okay, let's see how many see how many we can you want to reclaim as much as possible i will say you if you if you want to buy a bunch of stuff you don't you only need like one of each one of these the springs go quicker than anything so we are going to try to reclaim as much out of here as possible because i don't like spending if you look on the inside see all of them there's only one area that those come out so we're going to try to reclaim both so it doesn't rattle in the doorknob, but also, oh no, I see it, to reclaim as many as possible because, you know, this costs money and the less money you have to spend buying them, the better. I just set that spring down and it decided to spring, as springs do. Now, I will show you why these are different than regular springs. If you look at a regular spring right here, See how that has kind of a coil at the top? Focus! See how that has kind of a coil at the top? These are open, right? And that is because this pin, the top T pin, has to go, I can't do this behind the camera, hold on. Just like that. So what's happening, oh, what's happening is this top P T pin it won't go in a regular spring. So you have to have these special springs with this open top and this pin goes into it. And this is actually your top pin and spring, just like in a regular cylinder. This pushes this into the bottom pins. However, putting it back together, if you have one that's blown off, like once it comes off, it's bad. So that's why you need replacement caps. If it comes off, you do not want to take the chance of it coming off again. There are a couple of ways to do this. Let's go ahead and remove the clip on the back. So we're going to turn it to the stop position. And then we're going to do the thumb trick here. Sometimes it works okay. Sometimes it doesn't. Right there we go. And we're going to drop this out. So again, ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. So that only had... I thought it had already blown up for sure. All right. Now, sometimes these cylinders go completely bad. Now, you can do this one of two ways. <sighs> we can go ahead and key up the cylinder. Let's grab a set of Schlage keys. Let's go uh, got standard Schlage keys for, what is that? 9558. 49558. So, in the Schlage world, 4 is 222. Nine is 300, five, five is, okay, so there's, that was a little gritty going in. That may be why there's no one and two, five, five. What was that last, what was that last one? Eight, eight is 285. Just like any other Riki, pick the pins from the chart to match your cuts and put them in there. Again, you can do this one of two ways. You could go ahead and do this Tap that down. Looks like this is a little bit of trouble. So even when we get it together, it may not work right. I'm gonna push all our pins down and then we're gonna take these top pins and we're gonna drop them in there with the point up, just like that. Okay, and we're gonna do that with all five. And some people, don't, you, can do, you can top load these as well. Either which way is just a little tricky because basically you're having to balance these springs when you snap on 
the okay we were missing nope we're not missing one we got we reclaimed all the top pins that is good we don't have to use any stock okay so let's go ahead and knock those down push them down into the bottom holes as far as possible now we're gonna we we see only four springs did we miss a spring Yeah, I guess we only have four. That means we're going to have to use... Nope. We're going to have to use... This. No, here it is over here. I don't know why it went over there. All right. So then come in. Spring in. Spring in. Spring in. Spring in and spring in remember this is just one way to do this we'll go over the other way we're going to get our new cap guy and basically the tops of those springs sit down in those indentions so when you're doing this and once again i'm doing this behind the camera so i gotta i gotta peek over you gotta make sure by looking at those holes through the top that your springs are actually centered see how that's starting to to fall over and, and this is why sometimes this works sometimes it's better to top load them okay i think we're now we're going to push straight down i think we're on each one of the springs so we're going to push this down and nope you're going to line up those little teeth right there just like that Look in it again, look down it, make sure all the springs look okay. And give it a go. Now I'm a little bit concerned because that guy came off, so you do need to watch that. You do need to try it a few times just to make sure that it stays on. So what happens if we're not going to redo this one because obviously that cap came off time for a new cylinder there but what happens if you dump this out like this oh no <laughs> I have one of two options if you dump it out and this cap is still okay you're going to want to top load it you don't want to you don't want to use your supplies your extra stuff so what we're going to do is we're going to grab a hollow uh actually yeah let's let's use a hollow follower for this a little bit harder to do but all right so basically this is a little bit more difficult or really i mean not so much a little bit more difficult maybe we're gonna take this we're gonna put that in and it's gonna push up on the cap right so we're gonna take this guy Turn it upside down. Get it in the top of the spring, just like this, if I could see it. Just like that. All right, and then I'm gonna back off the cylinder a little bit. Push it down, and that's gonna push the middle up. For these to effectively work, you really, really have to have all five in there. Unlike other locks where you could, you know, if you have a, a messed up chamber hole or something, really for these to balance correctly, oh, you got to have at least the front, back, and the middle, right? It's a bad idea to drop springs, period, and pins, but, you know, sometimes you got, like, the front chamber holes messed up. What will happen is if you don't have this front, done it that that it's gonna sit unevenly uh oh oh i lost one did i lose one we'll start we'll start we'll grab this one and look for that other one in a minute yeah oh, i lost two that's because it's uh it's a little bit more difficult than uh than doing regular cylinders y'all okay let's not lose three we didn't lose that third one where did it go there's one. We're going to steal one from over here. All right. Now we turn it around. We're going to do that fourth. Oh, shoot. Jason. <laughs> that happens. Just a fact 
the locksmith live. Okay, last one. As you're doing that, you do want to make sure those guys sit correctly. If you look at the underside of one of the caps, you can see these indentions, right? And the springs have to be, have to be right at the other side of that. It has to be like right in that indention. So when you look at it, after you get it keyed up, you want to look at the front. Yep, yep, those look straight. And then get a flashlight, which we don't have batteries in mine. Make sure there's no weirdo things going in in those and, and we are good so we'll go ahead and put that clip back on and to get it back in the knob you look inside and you should see an open area see how there's an open area right there the rest of it's solid so at that open area that's where you want the bible this part to go in so smoosh down push in push in and then use your key to hold it until you get back to the door. Remember in which way you had the key turned or had it picked. So if it's there, you don't have to take it apart. If it's functionally okay, then what we do is we just rekey it. So to do that, I usually smush it down. Like smushing it down doesn't hurt it by any means. That's, they're designed to do that. And then I'll walk the clip off. That keeps that safe and protected until I'm ready to follow it out. As always, get your follower. It's at that 90 degree mark. Make sure you have a smooth area to go across there. And then obviously, rekey it just like any other leg. In this case, it would be 47733. We're gonna dump those out and grab 47733. Put this back on there. Four seven seven three three is two ten, so that was two twenty five, two seventy, two seventy, and then two ten, two ten. Did I say that right? Okay. Put that in. Make sure it works. Make sure it's not jamming up. Check your key. Put your clip back on. And that's how you rekey your Schlage compressible cylinder. Where did the clip go? Hello. Okay, we lost the clip. Fascinating. Oh, that's because it's a magnetic tip. <laughs> nah, it's stuck to it. Right, boom. Key out, move this out of the way. Look for your open hole. Smush it down, push it in. Grab your key to hold it still. Turn it the same direction it was. Uh, I think may have been this way on this one. No, maybe this way. Oh no, let's see. There. Push in. Usually what I'll do, okay, on, on almost all F-Series, I'll put it in with the key in it. Pull the key out, then use the tip of the key to press that in. Push it in a little bit further, and then turn the key to the right or to the left and make sure that it works. So that's how that functions. And let's go put this back on. I believe we had this picked to the locked position. So once again, we're going to use our key. Line up the retainer hole with the retainer that's there. Push it in until it stops. Pull our key out. Use the tip of the key. Boom. Push it in a little bit further. Key back in. Push it in even further until we hear it click. And check your key. And as always, if you did not take the doorknob off, which you don't have to, if you have a key and you're just rekeying it, as always, follow up by tightening the interior screws. Always make sure, oh, we're missing one completely. Go to the truck and get a new screw. But always make sure your interior screws are snugged up. They do, you do have to angle your driver a little bit to get in there. That's why it's important to have that smooth shank and to have a quality driver. So that makes it easier to get that screw out. Now, last thing, and we've done a what's inside video on this. One of the biggest failures of the F-Series is this latch. 
if you go to close the door and the latch bangs and it doesn't automatically, if you can't press this latch in, the latch is bad, has to be replaced. No other recourse there. So that's one of the biggest failings with the F-Series is having replacement latches. So if you're gonna carry parts for Schlage F-Series, replacement latches is by far one of the biggest issues with it aside from issues with the compressible cylinder and once again that concludes yet another schlage video next up we're going to talk about secure key and then after that we're going to talk about a series so stay tuned make sure and hit that like make sure and be subscribed so you know when that video comes out we appreciate you watching